it was December uh, 2021, and I was traveling to Tampa, Florida to give a talk. And it was my first time traveling in two years since the pandemic started. And I was excited to be out in the world again, but also a little bit nervous about what it was gonna be like traveling with all the COVID protocols in place. But the trip went more smoothly than I, than I could have hoped. The flight was early, when does that ever happen? And um, so I, you know, I got, got outside and called an Uber to take me to my hotel, the airport Marriott. And within two minutes, uh, Federico, the driver, pulls up in this gorgeous silver Audi A6. And I'm thinking, I'm living the life. This is great. <laughs> so I get in the, you know, get in the car a moment later, we're off to the hotel. As we're pulling out of the airport, Federico turns and says to me, so we're going to Miami. And I think, okay, I'm confused. I'm thinking he's kidding with me. And I say, great, Miami. I love Miami. Let's go to Miami. He said, do me a favor and look at your phone. So I looked down at my phone and indeed I had selected the airport Marriott in Miami. <laughs> which would have been a very long and expensive Uber ride, as you can imagine. So Federico said, not a problem, just delete, you know, cancel the ride and initiate a new ride to the correct destination. So I, I did that, but instead of pairing me with Federico, Uber paired me with another driver somewhere else. And now I'm thinking, uh-oh, and I'm getting, getting, I'm getting anxious. That's when Federico said to me the words that I will never forget. He said, don't worry, I got you. We're gonna get you where you need to go. And that's exactly what happened. So Federico's actions that night embody the idea of conscious accountability. And in the next couple of minutes, I'm gonna to describe to you three ways that conscious accountability is different from traditional ideas of accountability or what I like to call accountability 1.0. So the first way that accountability, uh, co conscious accountability is different from accountability 1.0 is that accountability 1.0 focuses on results. So did, it, did you do the thing you were supposed to do? Did we achieve our goal? Conscious accountability focuses on results and relationships. So in addition to asking the question, did we achieve our goal? Conscious accountability asks, how were people and relationships impacted as we were pursuing our goal. So it's a mindset shift from I and me to, 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 to thinking about relationships and, and aiming to improve relationships as we elevate results. The second way that conscious accountability is different from accountability 1.0, accountability 1.0 is largely an individual sport. Now, there's nothing wrong with individual sports. And indeed, individual accountability is an important component of conscious accountability. But uh, conscious accountability is more of a team sport. And, and, and it goes a little bit further than, a, than accountability 1.0 in this regard. Accountability 1.0 asks the question, so did I do my part? Did I uphold my end of the bargain? Conscious accountability goes, to, goes beyond that and asks, not only did, did you uphold your end of the bargain, but also did I think about how I can help other people so they, are, so they have everything they need in order for us to achieve our shared goals together? So that's really you know, changing your mindset to thinking more broadly about everyone, not just about yourself in accountability. The third way accountability 1.0 is different and conscious accountability is different from that is that accountability 1.0 is focused more uh, you know, it's more reactive and more focused on blame, whereas conscious accountability is more proactive and focused on learning. So when things go wrong, as they inevitably do, you know, there are mistakes, balls get dropped, right? This is normal, this happens all the time. Accountability 1.0 tends to ask, well, who screwed that up? Or, you know, what, you know, what went wrong there? Who needs to be held accountable? Conscious accountability asks slightly different questions. It asks who is empowered or who's responsible for making it better? And also, what can we learn from all this? What can we learn when mistakes happen? So when organizations develop a culture of conscious accountability, it can make the difference between organizations that are average or good versus those that are truly exceptional. And 
unless you are actively working on developing a positive workplace culture, as we know, employees will vote with their feet. It's a lot of what we've been talking about. And in a recent MIT study found that um, the strongest predictor of job turnover during the Great Resignation is a toxic workplace culture. And it is 10 times more powerful than compensation in predicting job turnover. So in order to help leaders and organizations develop a culture of conscious accountability, my colleagues and I developed uh, the Connect Framework, which are seven practices that help you build that culture brick by brick. Now, this is a teaser, because we don't have a time to talk about all seven today, right? But we're going to talk a little bit about the first one, which is creating clarity. So being clear on where we are going, why we are going there, and what does it take um, from me and from you um, in order for us to be able to get there, OK? So let's return to our Uber example for a second. Whether you're an individual or a team or an organization, we're all trying to get to some destination. Accountability 1.0 may get you there, but conscious accountability will get you there and make the journey more meaningful, efficient, and enjoyable. Thank you. Thank you.